fool, you are worthy, O Lord. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. I uh, would like us to we're all welcome in the name of Jesus once again, and uh, I would like us to uh, open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. From verse 1. Yes, go ahead, please, sister. Amen. In Jesus' name, I read. Um, by be ye therefore followers of God as ye children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Of the body. Therefore, as the church is submitted, is sub- 
you may have to dwell in the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. But this cause shall a man be his father and mother, and shall be joined to do his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a good mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you be particular to about his wife, even as himself, and a wife he got. She is your friend or husband. In Jesus' name I read. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Delphine. May the Lord bless you. Amen. What are we talking about today? First of all, we'll be dealing with walking according to the love of God. Walking according to the love of God. Praise the Lord. From verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. I intended this to be a Bible study by the grace of God. Uh, because for a while now, we have not really had a Bible study. And uh, I don't know, but it's my prayer that we will have that back soon in Jesus' name. Amen. Because a lot of us... Uh, some of my brethren are, are asking for the Bible study. Amen. Uh, please, brethren, if you want to send any message, just send it straight to the um, general message so I can see it. Amen. And it says, Be therefore followers of God as their children. So, what does it mean to be a follower of God as their children? I want to ask a question. Who has an answer? What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Followers of God as their children. What does it mean to be a follower of God as their children? Um, by being obedient to Him is very important. And um, obeying all His commandments, loving Him with your whole mind, soul, and your spirit. Amen. So our sister has said, loving him, obeying him. Amen. I think she has just answered the question. As dear children, how do you, how do you, if you want to be a dear child of your father, what qualifies you to be a dear child of your father? That you are what? You are always doing things after his word. And you see that your father will love you so much. When anything you do pleases him. Amen. And he says, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us as an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sermon. First of all, I want, to, I want us to understand something, that no sacrifice will be acceptable except there is love. Amen. So, even when you are giving your offering to God, don't just give your offering because it is mandated that I give your offering, but you have to give your offering to God in love. So, I want to ask us a question. What do we mean by walking in love? You know, now, is it the Bible very well? It says, walk in love. As Christ also has loved us. Amen. So, the kind of love we should have is synonymous to the love that God or Christ had for us. And the question is, do we love God the kind of love he has for us? Now, look at your love for God. The Bible says, even while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. When it seems like God, <laughs> I don't want to use this word, but <laughs> I've had somebody use it before. But let us, let us, even if it looks like God has offended you, 
right? It looks like God has offended you. Do you still love him? When it seems like there is no strength to carry on. When you are facing opposition. Does it still, do you still have love for God? Amen. I want you to understand that the sacrifice of Jesus was done in love. And that sacrifice was a sweet smelling savour unto God. So, you might be saying, ah, Jesus died a painful death. But do you know that that sacrifice was a sweet smelling savour? Now, you might be now, how do we mean a sacrifice can be a sweet smelling sap? That that sacrifice is what pleasing in the sight of God. And just as Christ offered himself that was pleasing to God, so also you have to love God as is pleasing unto him. God demands our love. When we talk about love, we mean spending time with God. You know, if, if a husband loves a wife, he spends his time with his wife. You know, they go out together, they spend time to talk, you know, they do things privately. That's the same kind of way you love God. You spend time reading your Bible, you spend time praying. If you find it difficult to pray, if you find it difficult to, 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 to study the Word of God, more than you even eat, more than you even watch TV, for those of us who might be watching TV, for those of us who probably go to school, if you find yourself not loving God, even more than these things, know ye therefore that you have not yet started because Christ offered himself, that was the level of love. The love pushed him to make that sacrifice. What is the extent of the sacrifice that you are making for God? I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanliness, uncleanness, all covetousness, let it, <laughs> brother, listen to this word, let it, not be once named among you as becometh saints. It is saying here that there are some sins that should not be named among you. <laughs> Amen. One of them is uncleanness. What does it mean to be unclean? You are walking about with sin in you. You are living a life that is not bringing glory to God. Let it not even be named among you that, ah, we are seeing Sister A. She's doing this thing. Ah, Brother B. Ah, he's doing that thing. Because what? Has become it saints. We are, we, are, we, are, we are what? We are walking towards being what? Saints. We are saints in Christ. So sin should not be a problem again. Amen. Now look at what the Bible says. Neither filthiness. <laughs> Brethren, I want us to understand the level at which God is telling, speaking to us today. There should be no form of filthiness. Take note of all the characteristics. No foolish talking. What do we mean by foolish talking? You spend your time talking about how a, maybe let's say a worldly musician 
is going out with a woman. You spend your time arguing about footballers. You spend your time arguing about which car is the best. Foolish talking. Praise the Lord. No jesting. It means coarse jokes. You see, all these jokes that 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 they make fun of God, they make fun of church, they make fun of Jesus. Avoid them. Jokes that involve filthiness. They talk about maybe girlfriends and boyfriends. Jokes that portray fieldiness run away from them. He says, but rather giving of thanks. How many of us live the life of thanksgiving today? All you are doing was thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Brethren, we ought to give thanks at all times. If you find yourself not praising God at any time, I want you to check your heart. Do you know I've realized something? Even though you know something maybe does not go well according to your own human judgment. There's, if you have the Holy Spirit inside you, there will be a voice maybe singing something like, It is well, it is well, it is well, in the name of Jesus, it is well, with my soul today. And you have a choice, either to say, shut up, or to say, it is true. It is well with my soul today. This, my pastor described it as there is going to be a song playing in your mind. That's you are not singing. Maybe you are just maybe going to work. But there is a song playing inside you. And he described it as that is the spirit singing. When the Bible talked about they shall worship me in spirit and in truth. He said, that's the spirit singing. Because inside you, maybe you are thinking about your test, but there's one song, there's one voice singing inside you. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now it says, Now, let us know that all this habit should be put away, but let us have the spirit of God thanksgiving even as we await the coming of christ be always filled with thanksgiving anytime you find that thanksgiving is not on your lips the bible says that will enter his courts with praises <laughs> brethren let us know that if you must be in the presence of god what should you have with you thanksgiving praise don't enter into god's house say father uh, you have not given me food. You have not given me water. No. God has given you the most important thing, which is what? Life eternal. I pray God will help us to understand this in the name of Jesus. Amen. For this ye know that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man. I want us to be very careful about this thing called covetousness. Be contented with what you have. Be contented with what you have. You might not be as talented as brother A. You might not be as talented as brother as sister C. Be contented with what you have. When you see other people doing well, thank God for them and encourage them. But don't begin to say, eh, why, why is it not me? Why is it not me? Be careful with that sin. Covetousness. He says, no, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater. 
That's because covetousness is what? Is equal to idolatry. Because you have set that thing for, for, for as your God, as an idol. Maybe if it is somebody's car you saw, you say, ah, I want that car. I have ah, that person's car. I want it. You begin to look for ways of how you can get it. Don't develop. There's something we call longer truth. You know, they were sharing things. It's tough to thank God for the one you got. You decided that, ah, is that person's own me I want. He says, that is as equal to what? Idolatry. Because that person is an idolater. They have had no inherit any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen. So don't think nobody can enter here. I was discussing with Brother Chair yesterday, and we're just telling ourselves that the standard to enter heaven is really hard. When God says no unclean thing, truly he means no unclean thing. Just like us, some of us are in different parts of the world. When you were when you want to uh, travel and they say if your visa has expired you cannot travel or if your passport has expired you cannot travel would you still go and test them and find out to see if truly what they said is true or would you believe them that it is true if my visa or my passport has expired i can't travel you believe them right and you take them seriously so also take the word of god seriously if you know you have any amendments to make make them while there is yet time praise the lord let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things commit the wrath of god upon the children of disobedience do you know why the bible calls them the children of disobedience she didn't call them the children of of covetousness she didn't call them the children of of uh, lost calls them the children of disobedience because any sin at all is disobedience to the word of god amen There's something that the Lord was showing me yesterday in the book of Deuteronomy. I would just like to read that place quickly for us. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Was it 28? Yeah, 27 verse 26. I don't know if it was yesterday, but I think um, verse 20, 27 verse 26. Cause the heat that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. Brethren, anybody who fails to confirm the word of God, to do it, that person is doomed. And that is why we must have a heart of total surrender. Hmm. The need for total surrender. What are we talking about? Walking in the law of Christ. How can we walk in this way? We have talked about how God wants us to what? Live our lives. We should live what? Lives of thanksgiving. You are not the one who, who you know, sometimes I used to ask, I used to, the Holy Spirit used to make me understand something, that you are not the one who would develop the fruit. Like you are not the one who will mani- who who manufactures it by your strength. It is the spirit of God dwelling in you that does it. You know when we read these things in scripture, you the only thing is if you surrender your life totally to God, it will be automatic. The way God will begin to work in your life. They drop this, say yes, sir. 
Take that. Yes, sir. Go there. Yes, sir. Stop here. Yes, sir. Go back. Yes, sir. It will be what? Automatic. It will not be manual. You are trying your best. No. Just surrender. And the grace of God will save you. Amen. Now, let us go on. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Ha, Lord of heaven and earth. Heavens. Brethren, when the Bible says, Be ye not partakers with them. That is because the wrath of God is coming on them. Separate yourself. Or you will be destroyed alongside with them. When the Bible says separate yourself totally, make sure that in every way of life, nobody can come and lay hold on you and say you are part of us. Please be careful. Don't let somebody lay accusation on you that yes, maybe they were talking about things that are not glorifying to God. They are talking about same-sex marriage. And you say in your heart, you are saying, well, God might not really punish them. You know. Ha! Are you wanting to be a partaker with them? When God says, don't be a partaker with them. Don't support them in any way. Don't encourage them in any way. All of these things you have mentioned, uncleanness, filthiness. When we talk about filthiness, some people ask, what is the meaning of filthiness? Filthiness is anything that is what? Dirty. Dirty. And the Bible has told us things that are dirty. Lying is dirty. Stealing is dirty. Homosexuality is dirty. Any form of filthiness, cut it off. Sometimes you might be confused. Sometimes, you know, because of the kind of world we live in, that the people call black white and white black, it sometimes is difficult for a man to differentiate from one from another. And that's why you need the help of the Holy Spirit. As we read further, you will know what you will see how you can differentiate. Amen. But for now, it says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Amen. Brethren, I would like us to mute our minds. Sister Asumadu, your mic is on. Amen. It says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Amen. I remember seeing something about vain words. When we talk about vain words, vain words, words, words that are what filled are uh, vanity. Now, when you talk about vain words, somebody deceiving you with vain words, it means that the person is trying to. Okay, let me use this illustration. Uh, give you an empty box. You know, an empty box. You know, you, you think that it has substance, it has value, but it has no value. Vain words. Words that have no value. Somebody coming to tell you that don't worry, you can go on sinning. Salvation is, is lifetime. Okay. It is not okay. Amen. So, don't allow anybody to tell you things that will puff you up, but rather has no internal value. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry this should have been a more of a discussion. But by the grace of God, I believe we'll have, we'll have more discussion. I might be ending very soon so that we can take questions or contributions. I'm not here to just finish the whole Bible. But I think that uh, as God will help us, maybe next time we'll be able to finish or continue from where we stop. Amen. Verse 8 says, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 
Now, what does it mean to walk in the light? We, 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 we discussed that last time. First of all, you have to walk in love. Amen. That's what it means to walk in light, in the light. In the book of First John, First uh, John chapter 2, verse 10, it says, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You have to love your brother. You know, and when you look at this thing, it boils down to what Jesus said. See, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he said, love your neighbors yourself. You ought to love your brother. If you don't love your brother, forget it. You're not walking the light. You might ask yourself, how do I love my brother? The Bible has told us what the meaning of love is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love does not what keep record of wrongs. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is humble. Amen. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is humble. So, how can you love your brother? Be patient. Be kind. Be, 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 be. Don't keep record of wrongs. Don't say, ah, remember that Saturday. Remember that Saturday, you 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 match me. Or remember that Saturday, you borrowed money, you didn't pay me back. Now again, you are coming back to love is patient. Though I'm not saying that when people do something that's wrong, you don't correct them. You correct them, but you are not keeping records of what they did. You point out their mistake at the present. Forget about the past. You know that's why it is good that you address issues. If your brother make you offended today, address it that day. Don't leave it. To go on because then you will now begin to keep a record of his wrongs. If somebody does something bad, you can go to them, brother, sister. This thing you did is not good. I, you know, I thought that this is, you know, as Christians, this is how we are to behave. If the person is an unbeliever, you tell them in love, brother, this thing, you know, even you yourself, judge, is it right you did this? Now, you see. You make sure that you address them so that it does not bring up issues of later on you begin to say, ah, remember the other day you did this. No, address it that they and let it go. If the person shouts at you and refuses to accept correction, by the grace of God, you have done what the Lord has asked you to do. And if it warrants you to, you know, do what Jesus said, go take one of your brother. If he still refuses, go to the church, you know, things like that. If it goes to that level, do it. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have three more minutes. Amen. So now it says, um, I would have loved to end, I would have loved to mention verse to go to verse 11, but let's see how God will help us. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The fruit of the Spirit is in all what? Goodness and righteousness and truth. Whatever thing you should be as a Christian should be in what? Righteousness, in truth, and in goodness. Anything you're doing as a Christian that does not minister goodness, does not minister righteousness, does not minister truth. My brother, my sister, check it. Even as you go to school, let your academic performance, let everything you do minister righteousness, minister truth, minister what? Goodness. Don't think that, ah, because you fail, that ministers um, 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 bad things. No. Let every, that is why you must be subject to God. Because when you are subject to God, then he can bear Everything that will come out of you will be what? Goodness, in righteousness, and in truth. When we talk about righteousness, what does it mean? Do what is right. When we talk about goodness, what do, what do we mean? Things that are what? Pleasing and acceptable unto God. When we talk about truth, what do we mean about truth? Truth is the word of God. If your life does not speak the word of God, something is wrong somewhere. Anywhere you find yourself, and people always associate you with lies. Maybe they say, ah, you know, they, they look at your life and your life is not straightforward. Your life is, is calling that somebody can be able to think, oh, I thought you meant this. Ah, no, 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 I was thinking you. No, I, I, we, you know, uh, they get the wrong impression from you. Well, sometimes people can misunderstand you. 
But if your life is always sending wrong signal to people, people see your life, they, 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 ah, what they read from you is lies. They don't see you as a sincere person. My brother and my sister, you should what? Check if you are truly walking the light. What does it mean to walk in the light? It means to what? Walk in accordance with the word of God and the spirit of God. I think we'll be stopping here by the grace of God as God will grant us grace and we'll continue the Bible study later on. Amen. I don't know what uh, I would like to give this over to Broche to continue with the program. Amen. Another privilege, and this moment, I want to place you the opportunity 